There he sits on his throne, the Gold Hoarder, the last barrier to me and my prize, the Gold Curse. We've been down this road four times before. This is the final showdown. But first, let's tell the story. It's been four years since I started on my Tall Tale adventure, when I first listened to the mysterious stranger and received the Pirate Lord's journal on the Shroudbreaker. From there we faced off against the infamous Captain Briggsy and watched Madame Olivia eat her memories. She literally ate her memories, folks. From kitty drawings to stargazing in the midst of a storm, we went to work. We rescued lost loved ones, dealt with a shady skeleton parrot, bantered with the ghostly ferryman, broke the skeleton code, and got revenge for the crew of the Morning Star. And then we had to do it four more times. Each run of these tall tales takes about 10 to 12 hours to do. Four times over, it is mind-numbing. Which is why I hope you understand why it's taken four years for this event to pass. But here we are. With the completed Shroudbreaker allowing us to pass through Red Waters and the Devil's Shroud, we gazed upon our destination on the horizon, Tribute Peak, aka the Shores of Gold. The first time I laid eyes on the Shores of Gold, I fell in love. This is a beautiful island. The sun glistens off the rocks during the day, giving it a glow unlike anywhere else in the Sea of Thieves. It's large, but not too bulky like Old Faithful or Plunder Valley, where it's a pain to get around to places. And the design of all the ancient ruins is superb. Being at the Shores of Gold with no one else around really makes me feel I'm approaching the climax of my story. And in this case, we were. We had only one commendation left, and the Gold Curse would be mine. But in order to get to that point, we needed to solve a few puzzles. Four puzzles, to be exact, for four different corners of the map. You see, Tribute Peak is positioned like a compass per Briggsy's journals, so each of the cardinal directions has its own vault. In the western vault, you've got to go hunting for the symbols across the island. Four different symbols with four different areas. Meanwhile, in the southern vault, You've got to select the correct icons in three different rotations of the vault blocks, but no two icons can be the same in the rotation. In the eastern vault, which I think is the most confusing as you can tell by the water surrounding me, you've got to reconfigure the gold hoarder vault key. And in the northern vault, you've got to make each of the vault blocks match. Just try not to get hit by the revolving spike trap. Like that. When completed, each of the vaults will give you a medallion, which needs to be inserted into this compass ruin, which will then reveal the prize needed for the next phase of the tall tale, the Gold Hoarder Key. Now, Briggsy's notes refer to a passage to the belly of the island, but that she needed to cannon her way to the throne of a toppled titan. Well, there are plenty of titan statues on the island, but only one of them is broken down, and funny enough, it has a sealed door at its base. Time to play Cannon Parkour! Nailed it! Honestly, that's one of the most annoying parts of the Shores of Gold Tall Tale, so I was incredibly happy to have landed it on the first try. Entering deeper inside, it was time to use the Gold Hoarder key and reveal the inner sanctum of the Gold Hoarder the belly of gold. From here on out, it's all about traps. The whole underground is filled with traps that are set to kill you, and they're all one-hit knockouts. Luckily, there are checkpoints within the underground, so you won't respawn back at your ship for easier travel, but still, you'll want to exercise caution as you're walking through these areas. Can't forget about the skeletons, of course. Oh, and did I mention the traps? Must go faster. Must go faster. Got it. Okay, okay, you caught me. Let's roll the bloopers. Wait, where did that come from? I hate this corner. I hate this corner. I hate this corner. 
Did I really just get hit with the same trap again? Why would I jump that? Why would I jump that, John? Just gotta be careful. Just gotta be careful. Ugh. I always miss this jump. Always. Okay, John. Easy. Easy. E nope. Nope. After going through all the traps, we were finally approaching the throne room. I was kind of curious as to who was dangling in those cages considering that before Briggsy, the Shroudbreaker was supposedly lost. But as we inch closer to the final boss area, I could feel my heart start to pump. This event was four years in the making, and after today, I'd have something that less than 1% of the players of Sea of Thieves have managed to obtain. The battle was fierce, but quick. The Gold Hoarder's health scales depending on how many people are fighting him. So as a solo player at the moment, it wasn't too difficult to whittle him down, especially as I continued to pepper him with blunderbuss attacks. The skeleton mobs were annoying, but for the most part, I ignored them and just continued to focus fire on the Gold Hoarder until at last, it was done. And of course, I couldn't let the opportunity go without sitting on the throne and basking as the commendation started to roll in. Lord of Gold, returning the skull of the Gold Hoarder five times. Gold and glory, completing all the commendations for the Shores of Gold Tall Tale. And with that unlocked, I was also awarded the Gold Hoarder figurehead for any of my vessels. Finally, the last commendation was the Seeker of Grand Adventure, which unlocks the Sailor of the Shores of Gold title, and more importantly for me, the Shores of Gold Curse, commonly referred to as the Gold Curse. It was mine at last. I invited a crewmate I sail often with, Forfox, to set up a few fireworks to celebrate the occasion. First came Rathbone's Riches, Rathbone being the original name of the Gold Hoarder, and then a gold hoarder firework for good measure. As for the skull itself, I decided that it would be a great idea to let the local gold hoarder representative know that his boss has been put out of commission, at least for the time being, before heading over to the Order of Souls representative and selling the skull to them for 10,000 gold. Bon appetit, I guess. And with that, my journey to the shores of gold was finished. This was a grind unlike any other. Made more difficult the longer it was put off. Any time I wanted to do it, something new was added or updated with the game, which made me want to put it off even longer. But now that I've done it, I am so satisfied with the result. Who knows? I might even wear it out for a bit. Show off the bling, if you will. Until the next adventure, this is John Bardcore signing off saying so long and take care.